I'd like to write some more, but 180 carry dies trying to, to outplay, to play, and the other side... You know, I like writing as well, uh, particularly in my book of Magis. Um, I'm a big fan of that. It's not been built. No, not yet. No, 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 no. But it could, it could be. It could just be a ring. Maybe, maybe, maybe they would rather put a ring on it. <laughs> well, I think they're pretty happy to see... Oh, actually, that's a really Decent weird game. interaction. Uh, yeah. Pepe actually are able to flip back to it, even though he just, just there. It's the first few far, uh, frames of being caught. Actually, one with three getting caught. He's going to take a bit of damage here. They have with the Crescent Guard. Now they're trying to turn it around as so he comes over the wall with the ultimate spirit rushing away. Still got one more charge. Flash for the three talents, right? Knock up, and that gives a reset for Saken. They get the kill, and they'll get on out. They're just too far ahead at this point. Too far ahead, and... Uh... It is, again, hard ass to come back even before this for Phantasm. It's just getting worse for them at this point. Now the question is, how cleanly can Carmen Core close? Because it is 14 minutes now. Plates have gone oh. down. You're going to have um, a, a lot of ability now for Carmen Core to... I mean, or rather, like, you have a lot of ability to fight, but Carmen Core are buying the book. They're they bought the book. The book. And Nightmare book. is very smug right now. They did it. Okay. Um, library Pass has been granted. Granted. Two second, but as we, so, and this is actually kind of filling into the point which I half made before in terms of, look, it's 14 minutes. Plates are down. You don't have another Herald at this point. Or, uh, you can start fighting for another minute, but there's no Baron. You're not able to like cleanly close the game around a Solar or a Baron, which is what the meta has come to at some point. So you're going to have to find a way to snowball in another direction. Having stuff like this extra bump in power with the extra Mythic stat coming in from a very cheap legendary item for Mythic can help towards that. Herald number two is spawned, and Team Phantasma are trying to surmount a mountain taller than Mount Everest right now, because it's 11,000 gold there behind. Since 14 minutes into the game, they're going to lose a second Herald, and I am hoping they brought oxygen tanks and climbing equipment, because they have got a sheer cliff face of a game of a gold lead to try and I'm surmount a, right now. I'm hoping they, they, they brought a diamond worth 300 gold and a third level spell slot because it feels like they're resurrected. Yeah. Oh, oh no. That's Revivify horrifying them to look at. Revivify themselves in this game and uh, even if it were a diamond, diamond worth that amount, it wouldn't even get close to the level deficit. It's in this game. Like There's another the Herald house. coming in through the mid lane. This is again one of the power plays they can look for. They have ultimates up. You are really looking to do whatever you can here as Phantasma to catch this finally group team of Carmine Corp, but it is so hard to do so. Bain is on a third HP. I mean, team Phantasma living up their namesake, it feels right now, because they're, look, they're feeling ephemeral, like they've got no grasp at all. Anything they can do is back off. About to get Death Charge, will try and time this one up. Flash has to be popped as well. The loser tier two here, and this is a statement a from Carmine Corp. Okay, and, and, and this is what I was... This is what I wanted to see from Kami Corp. Yes, you're ahead. How do you close out efficiently? What's the What are the mechanisms you're using? And they're finding so much damage, even on these inhibitor turrets. It's 16 minutes in! It's 16 minutes in, and Kami Corp are angry. They lost yesterday to X7, and it was unceremonious. Well, they've decided to show people how it's done. I have not seen a domination this large in a very long time. Nicol X run off from his inhibitor turret. It's not even 17 minutes into the game. Over the wall comes Saken. They're getting it under Vayne Dana, who at least has Severum and Gushenda, but taking so much damage in turn. Will use the Moonlight Vigil and Severum to heal back up at least somewhat. But they'll lose the inhibitor. Lose the inhibitor, they'll probably lose the second down. one. I mean, at this one, you're thinking, okay, okay at end. least the ultimates are down. I don't know if they're going to end without all of their ults, but it's about as good as you can get here from Carmine Core because this... The SS Team Phantasma, this ship is, it's, it's, it's sinking. It's at the point where they're- It's they're, cracked in half. It's cracked not sinking. In half, um, like, this is Titanic mode. You've got, so you've got a, a violin playing oh. on the bow. That's oh. everyone recording. This could watch. be at the moment. The moment. It's a oh, moment. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. And it matters. Not at all. Blink, can you miss it? The Cataclysm is just a shooting gallery for <laughs> Nicolix and Pepe to die. It means absolutely nothing. It can end. It's if there's two members dead, they can just keep going. It's, no. It's one man. Not, it's a dream. It's a oh. Oh. And it means absolutely nothing. And again, you... Nikolax has tried to dive so often as the backline, but yeah. yeah. Yeah, you can see the problem when uh, the weight of the gold is uh, it's crushing. Quite, quite crushing at this point. The dragon has awoken. It turns out they were here for a layer of gold, courtesy of Team Phantasma being shaken down in this game. It looks beautiful. If you're not 11, 12,000 gold behind, this is the. You're not trapped in here with me. I'm trapped in. No, I'm trapped, trapped in, in here, here with you. you. I'm very much trapped in here with you. Please stop. And this is the point again where that's your five man just kind of like, we're going to point, point a target on our backs and see what happens. But there wasn't a Malphite there. There was no Moonlight Vigil over the top of it. It was uh, very far from uh, maybe being the far perfect scenario.
Well, they've been building a giant blue wall in this game, and I can imagine what various Twitch chats are looking like right now. Hugely dominant game from Carmine Court. Hugely impressive stuff, and what a recovery! I've got to say, yesterday. I mean, I, like, I, it feels like in this game, Phantasma are less of the wall, more of the colossal Titan, and uh, kicking through the gatehouse. The Phantasma's bot inhibitor, the last remaining one. One on three has picked up an elixir, two items on top of it. Army Court ready to stomp through the base. No more mistakes. It's a decent engagement. It only really lands onto one. They get to the backside. Reckless pulls the feather straight back through. It's two dead already. Pepe about to fall as well, but he manages to get back. At least only the Clover falls. Still a double for Reckless. In comes the Death Church of the Vein. Death of the Charm goes wide, but that'll be a thumbs up. And a dead of Belios. Another team wide. 90 minutes on the clock. And it will be a sub 20 minute victory for Carmine Core. The defending champions wake up on Raw. Every championship we have of this, every tournament, there's always a couple of games which get a little stompy. Won't always happen in the reverse matchup at Kami Core. Being the first team to really stomp to this degree. And this is after them coming off of a stomp of their own on the other side. This is, a, again, a good feel-good moment for the Kami Core uh, fans and the players to walk away from this and start to regain some momentum. Absolutely. And of course, they had a fantastic play in stage, came through looking pretty strong in that one as well. Uh, maybe some early game worries aside, but this game, after getting dismantled in the early game, they put on a clinic here. There seemed to be nothing they could do wrong. And um, this really did start from that topside pressure too. Uh, I, I look at what happened there and you think, okay, well, Malphite, Malphite really starts losing value if you can't get them any resources. And they did that perfectly to deny Bako getting any gold on the board. Well, after that domination there from Kami Core, we are going to have to cut to a quick break. And when we come back, we've got the fun match for us two of the day. Atleto from Italy versus Bisons from Spain. Go absolutely nowhere. You want to watch this one. So
Welcome back, everybody, after an absolute demolition, destruction, domination, other words beginning words. with D that involve the death and de demise of a team. It's Carmine Core woke up today and chose yeah. Violet. And Phantasma, they, you could see what they were looking towards, you know, if they could survive that top pressure early. Paco, who has been a weak side player for most of this split, could have actually maybe gotten away with this. And you see what happens when Malfa gets ahead of Graves in, the, in, in some situations. Graves struggles to get value, but that is absolutely not what happened. Uh, Phantasma really struggled and they lost this top lane skirmish, and that felt like a... That was the real watershed moment for him. Yeah, and they try to cover the dive, Nicolex gets something, but then on the other side, you saw Pepe getting caught out, and then they go again for this day at the Raptors, and it goes one for three, a great spike, three talent for one, one, three, and the game is suddenly completely out of control. And I like the mentality from Phantasma, but the execution from Carmine Core was superb. It was what we wanted of this team and what their fans would have wanted to. So they walk away with a very dominant victory and they set themselves a little bit back, more back on track than they were yesterday, of course, after their own crushing loss. Yeah, it was seemingly a wake up call. And of course, there's been a few of those over the split for Carmine Core, sometimes looking absolutely incredible. And then they have the little foibles they had in playoffs. But, but Sam. Who got a five-man ultimate this game? Uh, it wasn't anyone on Carmine no, Core. it wasn't. Nicol X comes in with the mother of all cataclysms that did about 5%? About 300, yeah. Oh. About, about 300 damage. <laughs> like, if in any other game state, it feels like there might have been something. But at this point, what you're watching is just the health bars, the gold lead, everything being just too much yeah. for Phantasma to say. It, it, it was a very clean game from Carmine Core. It was very... Uh, Poised game, you know, they were they were sat there. They didn't really give any openings. They didn't really fumble any of the openings that they were given on the other side too. And this is again, uh, I'm going to be walking ahead to one and one in this group and trying to keep pace with the rest. Of them. And indeed, considering this group as well, looks pretty damn competitive. X7, Game, Game of Legion, and X7. Yeah, Game of Legion, X7. Two of the other favorites potentially to come and win the whole damn tournament potentially. And you can see here at post game breakdown that is a hell of a goal grab from 0 well, to 17.5k in sub 20 this is, minutes. This is one of the few times where almost every member has almost doubled the damage of their opposing number. You can see that in both carry rolls in terms of the AD carries, in terms of the mid laners. Top lane you're expected with the Graves versus the Mal show. Sure. You look at the, the, this, this goal graph and you think, heck, maybe it would have been double in the jungle were it not for that ill-fated five-man ultimate too. It was, again, all of these uh, levers being pulled in the right direction and Kamiko understanding where their advantages were and playing through them. Absolutely, but enough about the LFL for now. We must turn our eyes to other regions. We've got ourselves Atleto versus Bisons. Should be pretty exciting because yes, Atleto lost the other day, but they made it damn well exciting. I am really excited to see what they can do today. Absolutely, and I, I think that, you know, Atleto coming in as, as, as the PG Nats representative, I loved what the PG Nats did last tournament, actually, with, with, with Matchgo and also good. Overpowered as well in the playing stage. They were done a little bit harsh in their group draws in the last tournament of the Amazon European Masters, and they they, they had, like, a play-ins group with, like, uh, over, there was the Group D, I believe, last time with, like, Maus and a load of other very strong brutal teams. Stuff. It was yeah. brutal stuff, but then you look at this team coming through now. Uh, we were speaking with Moonboy a bit, actually. Uh, he was a PG Nats analyst, and they were... Kind of surprised that Atleta came through in the first place because of their own inconsistencies, but they had a glow up, and of course, Matchko fumbled a bit in their own split. This is the team that they've sent through into the European Masters group stage, and these are the players that are going to be there. And it's not the first time as in European Masters these guys have made it to the likes of Ends and Cospect. I believe this is Ends particularly. This is fourth Cospect, EU Masters. Cospect is their fifth EU Masters, I believe. Mad stuff. And of course, Gabo, uh, talking to some of the other PG Nats analysts and the like, they reckon behind the likes of Chizuke, Shadow, this is the best Italian player they've ever, the region's ever produced. Yeah. Period. He's so Outside good. Of, yeah, I mean, there was, of course, uh, Click, one course, of the baseball yeah. players from that region who was playing incredibly well last year. They've had a bit of a struggle in this split as well, but these are the players which really need to be stood up and accounted for to take on a struggling Bison, adding it 0 and 2 themselves. Both these teams are in 2. One team will pick up their first victory today, and Bison came in with a lot of fanfare. They came in with a lot of hype around the drafts that they had, their interesting play style but it has not hit it off well so far. It's absolutely not. Of course, Gooby, this is a player I've heard a lot about over this split, purely because Goldborg, uh, fellow caster and friend of mine, just raves about the guy. He pulls off some incredible stuff. Karma, Gooby is Seraphine, really good. he's really good. We've seen some crazy stuff out of this team. Sarah. I'm so excited to watch. Exactly. It's just not quite clicked yet. And as we're kind of getting through to this last match of the first round, Robin, they need to start making it work now 
all things start to get pretty scary for them. Exactly. Because, you know, this is the last match of their first round robin. You only get six games. It is a double best of one round robin. It is quite unforgiving. We've seen teams of Worlds at MSI be one win away from even tiebreakers, and things get very close to the wire. And as we were saying, there aren't really free wins at this stage of the tournament. In play -ins, sometimes you can have teams which have just kind of cobbled it together for that stage, or they've fallen apart after a difficult finals performance because they, they tend not to be first uh, seeds from their regions. In this game, though, you're looking at this, and Bison's really, much like mm. we saw Carmen Core do in the last game, they need a momentum win. They need something to just solidify themselves, settle themselves. They have a lot of very hypey players. Um, if they can just calm down a little, settle themselves in, get one win on the board, that would mean a lot to this team. Absolutely, it would. And while they need to calm down a little bit in terms of the play, potentially, I'm hoping the drafts don't. Because we've seen some really fun stuff from both of these teams. I recall a Draven game out of the side of Atlanta. I recall things like Seraphine and Karma being options for the likes of Bisons. And when you're coming in, it's like, play the comfort, play the surprise a little bit. But play style and uh, comps don't necessarily have to be the same. You, know, you can play Karma even if the drafts are a bit out there. So now we're looking now into this matchup in particular as well, and we're getting straight into those picks and bans, and I really hope we are going to get a scrappy affair. As you said, I want things to be a little bit interesting, but it, I, because for me, when both teams kind of dive into the special stuff, it's a real um, test of how well the teams actually understand compositions, because when you kind of get used to free-forming how you're playing around your teams, when you're picking stuff like the AP Cogmore, uh, like Bison's were doing against uh, USC, you're, you're sat there thinking, okay, right, you need to understand where everyone's sat in this, in, in this composition now, because there are a lot of very awkward win conditions which you're not practiced against. And you can see some of those awkward win conditions that you're not practiced against. Getting banned away, Draven out from Bison, Seraphine, Zeri away from the side of Atleto as well. A lot of strong picks, sometimes a bit generically, but things like the Seraphine and the Draven, very much team specific. Yeah. Um, now, Moen has been a big Lucian player too. That has not been banned out by Atleta, and it is a triple flex for the Bisons. That would be a very easy first round for them, but Atleta is saying, no, we don't really care about it. Yeah, yet, the Gwen instead is the pick away for one final ban now from Bisons to solidify those initial bans. And there's a few things that have been left open that worth keeping your eyes Things like, you know, Jinx still up, of course, been very happily picked up by a lot of teams. Things, same sort of deal with something like the Aphelios, you can still trade that out. The Orn is decided as that final ban. Gabo has been really good. He's nearly turned around so many fights on things like the set. Set, yeah. Exactly. So taking away another one of those kind of top lane playmaking tanky champions. Uh, so now you're looking at again stuff like Jing, Saya, Ari, safe blind picks, right? Not that there aren't answers to them, but you are kind of looking at those champions as ones which are easier to blind pick. Now, when you're against Bisons, I don't think there is such thing as an easy blind pick. I would wonder now if a misfortune is going to be locked in. That's something that we saw from, of course, Gamer Legion locked that in at the game yesterday. Myself, yeah. And that is one of the real hard counters against Desire. However, uh, there's lots of options left up on the table. Well, we've talked about the Misfortune, it will yeah. be locked in. Still some questions about what style of Misfortune we get. Of course, we've got the the newer Leandri's build that's been rearing its head more recently, which might be an option. Yeah, here. Leandri's into Man Minute. Um, it becomes really, really powerful where you max your E, and because your ult scales with the Vape, people still does physical damage, it still works into a larger armor fan build. So you can definitely look towards something like that. They're going to lock it with the Jarvan. So you've got the shot yeah, glass combo. Is, it's the shot glass combo. Uh, maybe you can get a Ziggs in there to make it a proper bomb affair. Yeah. Um, and what this does mean is, again, you've got two backline AD carries. One of them has play event versus the Jarvan. One of them doesn't. A little bit unfair. Indeed. That said, you can still lock them in the cage, wait for them to come down, and then shoot them, yes. which feels a little bit yeah. cheating like clay pigeon shooting was. You generally don't wait for the lands on the ground, but this is the way it works now. I, I, I was about to say, I mean, is that what happens when Misfortune kills Zaya or Rakan? Is it just clay pigeon <laughs> shooting? <laughs> Or is that only graves because of the shotgun? You know, that's a question that I have yet to consider in depth. That might have to wait for another time. But we'll come back to that maybe. Either way. Well, Mighty Dragon's got the volleyball. Um, indeed, indeed, there'll be a Mighty Bear in the jungle. There we go. And wait, Mighty Bear was another player. He was indeed. That's why I read the reference. I was like, wow, okay. But, so Mighty Dragon, um, we, 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 with Jonix, actually used to play over in the LCL, over in the Russian region. And um, now, my dragon, after. So what's that has gone off all over the place and has come over to the PG Nerds. Of course, so there's been some fair amounts of weirdness played in the mid lane, but Victor is certainly not one of them. Locks that in. Very comfortable pick in the mid lane. You've got a lot of now AoE damage between mm. the Victor and there's a lot of zone control there as well. So if you can hold an area of the river, hold an area of the jungle, you've got yourself some good tools to secure that corridor. Okay, and now with the, uh, the Corky logs in, 
there is some real ability to jump forward. And Victor, as much as you'd like to outrange, against all three of the big engaged tools that you've already got in, or like the overlaid damage, Victor is going to have an awful time defending themselves against that, which makes me think, what do you do? Do you lock in a stronger front line and have to force them to play through it? Separate the team by having a Scion or something stood in between you and the rest of the the rest of the enemy Bison's team? Or do you have to pick something like a Tarn Kench and actually try and bail out your victim? Neither seems like a particularly good option here. Absolutely, because uh, never mind play pigeon shoot. It's more like shooting fish in a barrel, rolling up to Jarvan's festival stand where he locks everybody else in and everyone else throws their R buttons at the people trapped in there and have a horrible time of it. And throw a package over the top of that as well. And you can see the combo coming together from Bison's a little less out there than some of their other mm. drafts, but it certainly makes a lot of sense. No, no Ivan yet. No, I, no, no Ivan yet. yet. No, um, but again, I think by corky top. But the, I, I, again, kind of speaking to this logic, right? Bison's banning away those stronger front lines, which might be, you know, if you're diving in as the Jarvan, as the Corky, you still don't want someone stood between you and the carries, kind of disrupting your efforts to kill that backline. Stuff like the set, stuff like that sign. Not only is it good bans against Gabo, because that set has been such a big pick for him. Again, it just plays into maybe the one failing point of your composition or were at lead that's a lock in a strong enough front line. Both teams here, zero and two, looking to pick up that win. One of these teams will be walking away winless from this first round robin, which is an absolute disaster for either of these teams. Chase the final ban away from Rowan, unless of course there's some real shenanigans to happen. Mm. Uh, doubt it right now. We've got looking at support. We're looking at top lane counter pick. It's been the go-to every single match today. It's part of the meta. Uh, and I'm assuming we'll see potentially a blind pick support here, because do you want to give Gabo counter pick? I think you're pretty... I mean, now the Jace has been banned out, you, you start questioning things a little okay. bit more. I think we, we, if, you, if the Jace is available, that would have been a pretty, pretty easy lock-in. But now with... You could have either gone for Leona, the Nautilus, or maybe the Rakan to kind of give you, again, an extra level of engage. Uh, be able to play through boss sure. early. Nautilus be, is able to fight from level 1. Gives you an extra power in that TV2 to, to take over another side of the map. The response looking to be potentially something like a Leona. Mm. Uh, more of that zone control, more of that non-committal hard engage you can throw out. Another bit of tools to potentially punish people diving in on you. Mm. See how it plays out from here. They've got themselves a top laner to go towards. Well, what does Gabo have in his back pocket? What does he want to go towards in such an important playmaker for this team? Something like a Camille, maybe an option. Uh, I was wondering, but particularly when you've got a mobile backliners or at least uh, in the Misfortune and then having the, the Corky, which can lose out on the 1v1, it, it wouldn't be a, a bad pick. Something which is a bit more safe to blind pick like the Nar, though, you can understand that being the more preferential pick just because uh, Camille has harder counters than Nar in some ways. Not that Nar is not uncounterable, don't get me wrong, but Camille, when you're in a bad matchup, is pretty sad. And I'll never entirely hate Nara to Jarvan, because if you have a Mega Nara and you put a Catacombs there, it's like, well, thank you for the free wall. Like, you have at least got tools there to potentially punish the Overdive, and you can look to get onto something like the Misfortune, who uh, unlikely to run something like a Gale Force, but the way things are is Karma Top is locked in, shields and heals and ways to potentially yeah. prevent some of the burst coming out of someone like Zonix. And it also means that early on, Nar's not gonna be able to push in. Mid lane's gonna be a bit of a wash. Bot lane, you expect either to be zoned off the wave by uh, Comet E trades from the Misfortune. Albatreva should be able to have more ability to play through his lanes because they just tend to have more early control. Uh, and then once it does get up to the big grouped up stages, Moen at this point doesn't have to play Illusion, which can't team fight, playing a Karma, which makes everyone else much more impactful. Well, you've got the tools to do it. You've got the additional support to keep your double AD carries alive, even if they're really both of these AD carries actually casters, let's be real. You've got the engage option with the Jarvan on the other side at Leto. That's about a standard semi, I'll call it a front to back, but you know, like zone control front to backy kind of comp. It's very standard as far as you see on that front. It is. Uh, so now, yeah, I start after asking questions like, okay, Jarvan versus Volibear, what are their options? We already said actually Bices probably have their upper edge in that just because their ability to control waves earlier into that game. I think Bison's have walked away with a much easier comp to play than they have done in their first couple of games, and they're doing with an easier early game too. Much better from them in terms of how consistent they can play out through the game. I uh, will tell you, say though that we did see a Volibear game the other day from one man named Haru, where they absolutely stormed through the early game and got things rolling from there. And if you can go on the front foot rather than the back foot, start getting onto those AD carry caster, whatever they are now, champions, Maybe you can make some stuff happen here. On to the rift now, though. Atleto versus Bisons here at the Amazon European Masters. A very important game for both. So, both teams sat at 0-2. LVP not had a great tournament so far. Barca 
locked, locked out in uh, that playing stage, lost to Bifrost 2-0. Mm. Of course, now we've seen them uh, pull out a pretty, pretty important victory of their own. Uh, we get to sit here quite sitting pretty as NLC fans and, and cast and all the rest of it. For now. Either, but either way, the LVP would love to have the game themselves a bit more of a momentum booster. Uh, even Fnatic Team Keso losing a game of their own the other day. Want to try and stabilize. It is not even halfway through that group stage yet. Don't put on the warning sirens just quite yet, but still to knock to that confidence. And for the first time in the day, we haven't seen an invade to get vision down on camps. Just gonna be a straight five-man fan and nothing else to write home about right now. Yeah, well, level one, Volibert does a lot of damage. There's a Nautilus, there's yeah. a Karma. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of ability to walk in and go, ha, this is a really bad idea. Uh, so I'm not gonna be uh, risked at this point. And I think this uh, now is going to be a question of what can Volibear do kind of against what is expected of these lanes. Because uh, Volibear does have, of course, that incredibly powerful level 3 spike. Jarvan can dank early too, but you are kind of sat there thinking, Volibear, you got to do something because your early lanes are not going to be giving you much to go off. Match Q, the Soul Flare comes out, gets a little bit of a chunk, but not too much more home. Honestly, it's probably reached a little bit of assistance on the blue, but I've taken some ways. Uh, thanks for the leash, I guess. Um, we do have, of course, bot lane doing some things of its own too, and I have to see now whether Oscura and Gooby can take control of this lane because I is notoriously quite bad into the Comet uh, Misfortune which we're seeing. And don't quite have the range, and Gooby can do a lot of damage, but then the turnaround from Goldspect who does land that Zenith by Oscura on the other side though, doing a lot of work to get the ends locked down. There comes the Make It Rain Mark II. Cospec traded out on as well. And the HP lead does go Bison Spade. I do think Cospec goes to the right option there. You're trading health and a support for the AD carry. There is an Ignite blown from the Nautilus, but not from Cospec's Leona on the other side, though. Um, that will be an Albatroba who will be spotted out coming for this invade. We'll throw a war down onto the Reb, but Volley Bear's coming, but he'll be a little ways away and ends. And Cospec Ooh. have to back out as that dredge line hitbox not quite large enough, despite uh, all the various references and frustrations of League players around the world. So yeah, uh, I noticed the misfortune with the new skin on the one side, but ends Bunny Hops just out of the way of that one with a hop skip and a sidestep. Uh, Scurry though. And uh, Gooby still managing to get control over this side. Top lane's pushing in, mid lane's awash. It's pretty much what you expect out of these lanes. And you're looking here as Mighty Dragon, who is, again, just kind of lacking options at this point. You've got mid wave shove. That's great, but you are losing out on the top side. You are losing out on the bot side. That leaves Bisons with free reign to go and get that slight early invade, the ward onto the red buff to see whether there was an angle in bot side. We'll slow down Jarvan's clearer just a little bit. It's not really costing that much. You can walk from this blue buff into this scuttle crab with Ascure just securing and patrolling the river just in case. And Ascure, uh, walk out a little deep there. Is it a bait? Is it all a bait? It might be. They Ingo's goes by. Take so much damage though. He's just dead. That is not a bait. That is death. That is walking up into a huge amount of damage, and that is very greedy from Ascure. Uh, I. Hmm. Okay. Well, that's a dead Nautilus. I was going to say something more, but instead, it is just walking in and gets absolutely eviscerated in the second flat. So, um, that bot lane, which we were talking up so much, saying, okay, misfortune, desire, we know how this works. Suddenly, extra gold into that lane, but sadly, only the assist over desire. Still, that's a good, uh, it's a good win from Atlanta. They wanted to have something to play around in that early game. That's the big thing that we were talking about. And this is just, uh, again, you, you shouldn't really be stood there. And uh, Scurry doesn't end up uh, being able to flash after the first bit of CC comes down. Is not able to make it happen. He's going to have roamed up here towards the mid lane, see whether there's an angle onto Sonics, but with the way he's positioned close to his jungle on the top side of the map, just nothing to be oh, And yep. uh, we're left with a, a Victor Corky matchup, which is not necessarily the most exciting thing until team fights come around. So we'll, so we'll leave that one alone <laughs> for now, I feel. I mean, at the start of the season, it was fairly interactive where we'd see particularly high-level matchups. The Victor killing the Corky sure. at level 2, that was where we'd see things. Um, but then the pack would kind of turn around and uh, avenge that a little later into the game. But as you were saying, it is fairly um, neutralized as a matchup nowadays. We are kind of waiting for the first big objective to come up to see whether there is going to be any grouping towards the Herald. I'm not actually sure if either team... I'm, I'm not sure you want to play around first Herald as a letter, particularly when you do have... Uh, high value, very early game champions like the Karma and the rest of it. I, I think maybe you just want to have hands off until 
You can maybe get some angles through some sides after the Nars done pushing it. I think I see the recommendation there, especially considering you're into some very nasty combos mm -hmm. between you know, this Fortune Jarvan and all that kind of jazz. And giving up first Herald, having already got yourself a little bit of a lead in this early game, you're probably okay with, as long as you can trade it out mm. elsewhere on the map, you get a couple plates in, but you're probably okay with that trade. No. Well, uh, not going to have a chance to push in plates right now as they're under tower as this dragon's taken down by Bison. So, um, as we say that, bot lane is going to peel off as our I think once they realize their own vision is like, okay, let's not stick around, tank up that dragon even longer, because that's how you get low HP, and uh, another mistake in that river could have been uh, exploited through that. Indeed, but there will be no exploitation today on that particular call. They back away, cross a little bit of time for the jungler, and the bot lane of Bison. And uh, Mighty Dragon debating going for an invade here. We'll just throw down the ward, mm. though. We'll spot Albert Traber in just a moment. He's on that vision plan, and now he's in a 1v3. As over comes Mighty Dragon, who was tanking up the dragon. Uh, but over the wall goes Cospect, who landed the Zenith Blade. Uh, won't have to flash out, that will get uh, yes. away. Mighty Dragon, killing a dragon. Now, we were theory crafting. What? Because you know there's like, yeah, what, what, dragon v dragon it's combat. It's yeah. like, so like if, if, you, if, you kill, if you kill your father's patricide, Shakespeare was fatal yeah. with that. If a dragon kills a dragon, I was taking um, inspiration from like Tyrannosaur. Uh, Could it be ah. This I, I would like to dub this Tyrannicide because it's a cool word. Uh, thank you for Does John Williams do the soundtrack? If he could do, uh, that'd be great. I'm not sure we've got the budget for that. Um, <laughs> uh, life uh, finds a way, even uh, as do our references, <laughs> apparently. Uh, either way, first dragon secured by Mighty Dragon in that Tyrannicidal moment. But I, say, I don't know think so, how so, you so, conjugate so, that I, verb. I, I, I am aware that, like, because the what, Latin is like, Saurus is technically lizard stuff. So we should Probably. actually use side. But that doesn't sound That's as boring. Cool. Yeah, Tyrannicide. So I'm going to choose willful ignorance and Tyrannicide it is. There you go. Like, okay, well that's that's where we're at. You've heard the etymology of a new word specifically and, um, for my. Uh, okay, so every so often Sam teaches me a new word, and sometimes he just makes up a new word. And he taught me the word for making up a new word, which is called neologism. It is. We've done that today. Thank you for joining You're us welcome. again on this uh, very eventful uh, cast of uh, learning things, which are probably not related to the end. <laughs> that's pretty much half of how we do downtime. True. Um, <laughs> well, uh, there is a flash on, on Leona and there are uh, supports hanging around mid, so there was a potential of something happening, but either way, seems like both these teams really don't want to be the ones to step into enemy territory. We've seen actually everyone kind of be punished for that so far. You walk up a little too far. The ability to punish on the back end is, is really what's defining this early game and neutralizing so far. No one wants to be the first team to make that mistake. We are going to see a lane swap here from Enz and Cospec, though, and going into Moen here, who is going to just queue the way, courtesy of a Mantra-empowered uh, ability there to get rid of it. And with the Herald now, Swan Avalanche actually are going to be the ones to start something, despite some potential thoughts and, and theory crafting about why they might not want this, but they're going to start it up. Instead, it'll be Gooby and Oscure taking the plates in the bot side of trade. Oh, I think maybe uh, Bisons could just wait until that first package. Of course, that's a pretty uh, large power spike for yourselves. It spawns a little later into the game nowadays. I believe it's not around for the first Herald. It used to be at eight minutes, now it spawns at 10. And that's every six minutes after the, that first spawn, rather than every five after that point. So random. Uh, just sitting around, uh, actually built up the uh, Vamp Scepter first. So that is going to be not a straight... Um, Small shield, though, is it? It's, 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 it's not, yeah. not going to be a straight, uh, like a Hex Drinker, which is normally no. a first time we see. It's not going to be a straight... Um, Mune, which can come up. It could actually be an immortal shield bow coming through. I'm not sure I'd like that if that was the I case. Know. I feel like that's pretty hoverly nerfed. But I say, like, what, what else is that going to build into? Of course, there is that Ravens Hydra, Hydra, yeah. which we'll, I, I've not seen that built first on Corky for a not while. Not in a while, um, no. I mean, maybe maybe relying, or rather, relying, valuing. That's the mm -hmm. word I'm actually liking. Uh, valuing the wave clear here into the Victor and the Zion. Maybe that's the, the call. Like, okay, well, no, no, I'd, I'd imagine, so what I, would, what I would like to see is just sit on that, use that for landing prowess. Of course, it's going towards the uh, the call fields. Probably just going to be going up to that minimum. Stopping off for some life steal first. Hasn't gone for precision secondary, so it doesn't have anything um, life stealing in runes. Maybe just saying, look, this just helps me stick in lane, and it's uh, a decent item. Of course, in later patches in 12.7, that's going to be nerfed um, from 10% down absolutely. to 8% in terms of base life steal on the vamp scepter. So it would be able to do that on later patches, but happy to do it on 12.6. So we'll check in later on to see whether uh, Corky does decide yes, to it's just actually death on stance first to make yeah, sure oh, that uh, you couldn't even not. <laughs> It'd be dancing with death from us on the caster desk as we say, see, what are enough, you doing? Funnily enough, I mean, that would have been a hilarious build in what, season 10? Yeah, it was very the, strong. Yeah, yeah. It was the, 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 the what, it was death stance, Spinecton. shield bow. Oh. No, no, it was, it was, it was Iceborne Ezreal going for death stance. Oh. So that, that was, was a tough thing. 
Trip, a trip down not so nice memory lane. There's been a few moments where there's been like two item spikes for particular bruises and champions like Ezreal who have done horrible, horrible things, things to the items. meta. Yeah. Spirit Shoujin Renekton comes to mind. Spirit Shoujin yeah. Jax also, you know, Death, de death Dance. Rune Glaive. Rune Glaive. Rune Glaive, yeah. Way, way longer ago. Smite mid six. Ezreal with Rune Glaive. Power of Evil are repping that one in the, in the mid, oh, sorry, top lane rather. Merwin going to have to flash out from Mighty Dragon who is thundering, smashing his way in. Meganar comes through, knocks back the Karma who doesn't have any way out to deal with renewal. Trying to heal up with the turning off the tower and to kind of throw down his shield. Finally goes down, but it took a little while. That was because Karma is such an annoying champion just to displace from their lane. But the Predator comes through. Mighty Dragon and Gamma find an extended run up to get that champion down. It does take a couple of ultimates, does take a flash, but it's still something in the early game. That it is, and they've got Herald and Infantry as well, which might be given willingly over to Gabo's pocket, who, of course, on that Nar will want to become a split push threat sooner than later. Prospect on a story trading out his ends taken very low by the continued poke here from the misfortune. There's the Herald and the teleport coming through, but I believe that's still just gonna be first pirate down here. Sure, maybe maybe not full white. Not gonna be the full one just yet. Uh, maybe able to clear this one out. Oh, yeah. Mega not there, not really having the same amount of dive threat. Racing the tower, well. happy to split the map. Now with Moen teleporting back in, it does mean that the first tower still goes the way of Bison's. I thought maybe that teleport was a little overzealous, but of course it's a Karma who does have enough damage to clear the wave, and it will allow Bison's to get first tower on the other side, in spite of Herald and the kill on the top side. Yeah, so this isn't, by the way, this isn't going to be uh, the Leandris by the looks of it, from, no. the, from the side of this fortune. When you have double AP solo liners, even though the Karma's not going towards a high AP build for damage purposes on their own, you can kind of understand that, particularly when you've got like um, a lower damage Jarvan, you've got a Nautilus who's going to be doing an amount of magic damage too. Just going towards the straight lethality, you can understand why uh, it kind of even things out in terms of the damage profile for that team going for the Eclipse instead of, of course, the uh, the new Mythic we've been seeing built here and there on that uh, on that Marksman Champion. But speaking of that tower trade again, or at least the, the plates trade and then the, the attempted tower trade as uh, like they didn't actually finish off that tower on the top side, you are sat here now looking at now who's gotten some extra funds, some extra finances in pocket, and that's the one way I can really see Atlanta doing something. Playing around side lanes, Nar eventually getting to the point where he becomes a really difficult split push threat to deal with. Quarky doesn't particularly want to run into that champion. Karma, as we can see, potentially a diveable threat too. If you give gold over to that matchup, I think Atlanta are happy to use that as a potential win condition later into that game, and it open up ability to push in through a side lane and then go into the big team fights. One and one in terms of the Dragons. We've got a tower for plates trade that's happened. We're ending up with a game that is pretty neck and neck in terms of gold. It's about 200 lead or so to Bisons, and that's about it, which means we're setting oh, ourselves up for a oh, very oh, aggressive nice. mid game. It's because we're going to try and get to the Hex case, but he doesn't have a way out. We'll flash over the wall. Renewal won't quite proc from the Karma, but Random's coming over, throws down the Phosphor into that push to make sure no one was there. And the Cataclysm comes through to ensure there is no way out. Corky cool, donated the kill. Gotten the, uh, they've got themselves the first kill, have the Bisons now in this game, take a slim gold advantage, and Corky getting that gold is very important. Has got that Manamune stacking up, still sat on that Vamp Scepter, and we know what happens when Corky gets the three items. He didn't actually lose any of his damage, mind you, of course. He had himself a lot of nerfs on that package, nothing really about his base damage, so very happy now for Bisons to uh, get one of their own big carries, uh, more gold to play with. Of course, despite getting the kill, though, they still lost out a few plates there. A couple of mid, one in the bot, so not the worst trade in the end for Atlanta, as at least Gooby will just about pick up another plate and trade in that top side, but we're still left with a game that's maybe extended 100 gold more favorably to Bison. Still very close here. We see a trade on the mid side, though, is both mid laners starting to get enough damage to chunk each other out, at least in this early game. So now planning has finally fallen. We have ourselves kind of outside of, like, I guess the traditional early game now. Normally, we kind of stop referring to... That was the early game uh, post that 14 minute mark when the plates have fallen. It's a bit of an arbitrary timestamp, but it's better than you know, the timestamp that we tend to use. And let's use this time now as uh, we have some resets coming through to zoom out again uh, as we wanted to do on uh, the Amazon Universe. Uh, <laughs> you did it again! You, Amazon European Masters. Again, I, <laughs> I, I try my very best to uh, to, to not flub, but my brain is very scattered at times. So other titles with uh, some things for either way. We are going to have um, both of these regions trying to get their first win. Is it going to come down to a big confrontation around this Herald? I doubt it at this point. Both of these teams do really feel like two item spikes. That's what you're really working around on your carry. See if they can be forced to uh, leave their ruts a little earlier into the game, however. Random with the package will prove enough of a deterrent right now for Atleto to decide. I'm not sure we want this and we've yet to see a full unleashing 
of both of these teams. No 5v5, no real hardcore skirmishes yet either. And that's left us with a game that's, to see its first true contest. This Herald will go down to the Bisons, and we're kind of waiting, as I suspect you mentioned earlier. I suspect, I know you mentioned earlier. Uh, the two item spikes likely. Maybe the next striker might be another option mm. here. So Random was using the package as well, just to kind of ward off any uh, Atlanta uh, routes towards the, the, um, the Herald. They had vision just into the enemy jungle, would have been able to get over into that side of the map very, very quickly and split off that team, be very dangerous at that point of time. So Atlanta have to give that up. And Atlanta have, again, kind of kept themselves even in this game, slightly ahead now at this point, taking over uh, that top lane turret. Finally, took a long time to go take down that turret, of course. And, uh, both these teams, again, just waiting, holding back, starting to put some tension into the bowstring and wait for that first big play to be made. Zonix caught out on the side lane. This might, might be the big moment. No, I'm still not going to have a scurry come down. You can see him at the top edge of your screen. But <laughs> thinking about it. See how, how hard we're really reaching for this? I know. Wow, it could be the big... No, it's... It's, it's dark. And it's like, two, oh no, it's two people on the same screen for the first the time. time. <laughs> and it's, and it's just like hex gates well meant that ends and Cospec yep. turned up far too quickly. So good discipline from Oscuro there not to go for that. They'll summon that Herald in mid to secure themselves a tower here, which is actually a fairly big moment. That mid lane turret going down gives a lot more potential control here between the Corky and, of course, this misfortune. They've got ways to clear ways pretty damn fast. They do, and now you're looking at uh, Bisons taking down that enemy mid, uh, mid lane out of turret. And one of the reasons that they would be scared in this game were it to happen were would be of that Nar coming in from a flank somewhere after they've lost vision. It's much harder to lose vision if you've still got your mid lane tower uh, still standing. You have those high wave clear champions, Bisons. It doesn't look like much, and it's not very high impact in terms of the visuals. That's a big Ooh, moment. Ooh, there's that attempted Nar, but it'll be a flash away. And now the re-engage allows for the shotguns to come flying through. A bullet time and a rocket secure, a double for Random, who's now uh, trading out with ends as Merwin, trying to get that final kill. Flash Ooh. for the Dread Slime, forced the flash out and ends as well, and it's just two kills over to Bison. They continue chasing on as Unstoppable goes Mighty Dragon, but he is forced away from his brethren in the Dragon Pit. And Gooby will help secure that one with Alba Traver coming over to secure this uh, one. That's as that, well. that, that is case in point in why Atleta would really like to have Unseen Flanks get that vision control. It's much harder to go straight down uh, the throat of this Bison's comp and Gabo doesn't quite get the range right. It's a much harder uh, combat to land. And once you are into that fight, you ain't getting out. This is a single angle flight, flank, uh, fight rather. There are no flanks involved. Bisons get to fight all their shots in one direction and get large value out of them. Bisons, that could, as much as again, it's not the huge five kill, Baron securing ace and stuff. That feels like a big tipping point. Uh, checking in as well with Corky build, that is Immortal Shield Bow, by the by. Okay, so not gonna be the big poke machine, it's gonna be more marksman. You do have the shields from the Karma to help enable that. I do think, however, you know, by and large, poke Hawk is still the correct build to go in a lot of cases. There are no enemy shields on either side. Landing a rocket onto someone like the, even the Volibear, who doesn't have much sustain in themselves and doesn't scale that well as a tank. Basically anyone but now nah, you'll start landing rockets onto, it has high value. And you don't have to be within melee range to do it at that point, very low range. So. A random going for a more risky build. Uh, yes, having the shield can help, but I, I feel like, again, maybe going just maybe, maybe just a Hex Drinker would have been fine. Uh, either way, that's the build that they've gone towards, and uh, have to play around that from now. Now Moen being forced away from this bot lane tier one, Mighty Dragon and Gabo linking up again to try and keep that Karma away from the tower. But on the other side, it's Gooby getting free time to get another tower under their belt. And now in mid lane as well, Cospect. Chunked out a little, but won't go any further. There's that tower falling in the picture and picture. And I think as far as gold trades, I'm probably happier giving that over to the Misfortune than I am the Gnar at this point. Uh, th that's one side to look at it as well. The other side is that Bisons just don't really care about that side lane turret if it means that they are more safely defending their mid lane out of turret. Again, Bisons, very steady in how they're playing this game. And considering how their first couple of games went out where they were maybe harder compositions to play, um, this one seems a lot more cut and paste, saying, look, we will scale to a couple of items. We will front to back. Let's press all of our big buttons and outscale. This feels like a much more smooth game plan from them. It allows them, again, to just settle in a bit more on this stage, which they've struggled to do so, so far. You could see there from the little flick over from production that it was 1,800 gold or so ahead for Random, about 1,000 up for Gooby. They're feeling very happy with the gold in their pockets. Yes, of course, topside, Gabo's got a bit of a lead. Great news for him, of course, and for Atleta on that front. Mm. But 
you're feeling pretty happy, at least in terms of the gold spread and yes. gold distribution for Bisons right now. They've got their carries for two items. Well, what we do have is a little bit of time to, to talk about as well, in terms of like saying, no, but like, effectively, we, we've said pretty definitively, Bisons are happy if this game goes late game, right? And you think, well, hang on, is that really the case? There's a Victor, there's a Zion on the other side, don't they do a lot of damage? And the answer is absolutely yes. This comes into a larger question about what is that dreaded word scaling. Yeah. Because the way a lot of people will take that kind of uh, question is, if you're hitting training dummies, uh, large amounts of items, you'll be doing more damage. And actually, when you have all of these members like, locked up alongside each other, that ladder do have significant damage. It's not like they're completely eclipsed in that. However, in this game, when you have the Misfortune, which allows you to zone out this enemy team comp so well, and the engage options are so much more clear in terms of the Jarvan, being boosted up by the Karma to get him into range and all the rest of this, does feel like the Atlantis carries are going to really struggle to get efficiency. It does mean, however, it means that the damage is still there if Bisons do mess up to a to a to a certain degree. Yeah. Don't mess up, and of course they're not eclipsed. Both AD carries have got one each, so you know it's a like always being out eclipsed. What happens when you have two eclipses? Isn't that um, just a regular day? Of that? That, <laughs> <or> maybe it's, <laughs> a con is, it, is it just like it's a planetary convergence? It, we, uh, maybe we start it's having a syzygy. That's what it is. That's what oh, it becomes. It's the, it's the upgrade. <laughs> Orn gets involved. That's, I swear more I think so like so I I uh, I did do I studied physics for, for a while. I did a fair amount of astrophysics. I still didn't even hear about that word in that case. Okay, that's that's Goody. a bullet time. <laughs> uh, it, it was time for bullets, apparently. Uh, no one else was invited though. They clearly didn't send like, out hey, the invitation. Hey, Atlanta, come mid lane. I wanna show you this really cool come trick. Wow, have you look seen look the at these VFX? Bullets. Aren't they so pretty? Uh, I know it's the new skin, but it's like it's literally just like come to my viewing party of the new misfortunes. Give me a uh, fires out some fireworks. I mean, at the end of the day, means very little. Look at the cooldown um, going down on screen right now. <laughs> even, yeah, it's going to be up, actually, for the next dragon. This means functionally nothing, but it gives us a good plan. <laughs> it does it. I, I chuckled. That's what that is, is my dragon is actually thinking about going for a bit of a flank here, and with the bullet time down, maybe that's the angle they're looking for. But instead, they'll use this opportunity to shove in and try and secure some vision in the river ahead of this next dragon. It would be so point for Bisons. And they don't want to give this one up. They've avoided a lot of these 5v5s thus far, but I think we're about to see another. Maybe. Still waiting on that bullet time. Atleta uh, going to give up the inside track on the mid lane in terms of pushing in that wave. Bison's not shut now. out of the river just yet. The bullet time's back up. Now to see whether this bullet time may land. In they go. They get onto M who has to flash away. Getting that out of the sight is a big moment. Big make it right into the bullet time across three. We'll force another flash, but no kills down right now. What can Mighty Dragon and Gabo get done? They're going to try oh, and turn it three. Big rocket does land. Mighty Dragon trying their best. Random flashing out. Still no one dies to shield from the defiance of karma. Secure a rampage for random. The death row doing a lot of work on the other side to make it rain. Brings down Gabo. And now the three remaining members at Lanto fall. A triple kill to Gooby. Oh, and it's so hard for Atlanta to play out that fight after ends. Gets shut down. The world ends. At least Atleta's one ends with that ultimate being burned so easily. The fight gets split after that point. Maybe Gabo could have gotten to a point where he can zone out enough of those carries on the other side. But very difficult fight after that point. Bison's hit their items. And as much as I can very nearly closes down some of the carries uh, on that volley bet. It just wasn't enough. This is the real kill moment, right? Ends so, yeah. yeah, has to blow up and... Uh, that, that flash rod, not just that ultimate, but at that point, how does Ends fight? You've blown all of your defensive tools and you're not in a position to continue the fight after that point. Yeah, has to face the music, face the noise, and unfortunately for him, he gets erased at the end of this fight. Oh, I appreciate my Dragon trying to get through and get something done, but they can't quite secure the kills. Flash for the auto, the Make It Rain gets that one, and then it's 3v5, and there's just oh. nothing left to work with. And What's uh, a little disheartening, I suppose, from an Adler in this fight is that it still wasn't the worst fight ever. It no. wasn't actually a great bullet time. The bullet time gets some HP off of Cospect. It's not like it's hitting your carrot. It's not like it's going in a single direction, like we saw in that mid lane, first big fight, right? Where you have everything going in one direction, all the bullets hit all the targets you want to. It's not like you've got flanks to be aware of. And even with that, Atleta couldn't stand and five Bisons have themselves a sole point to work towards. And Atleta, as much as they might be able to play around some side lanes now with items up on... Disnar feels like they're running out of options. Three items in for Random and Gooby. It's still only two right now for Ends and Zonix, and they're about to lose this mid lane turret as well. The map is dwindling, and at this point, you are trying to store for three items, and then maybe play for this soul fight. Maybe play for the Baron at that point, but you need to not bleed out. Oh, no. Gabo getting caught on this side is not what you need to see. Maybe he can trade out, but he's a long way off Mega. Random has still got an immortal shield bow to chop through, and he'll just get that 1v1. Oh, there you go. That's uh, a lot of gold on Corky. Uh, that uh, 
mythic item comes in fairly useful at that point runs down the Gnar and Gnar on the side lane was again what we were saying is one of Atlanta's few options in this game start winning an area of the map control that and that gives you preferential fights after that point Armatrain has the spell oh yeah the that's actually Jarvan I, yeah, I missed so, that so the thing is Jarvan is a champion which I kind of I don't really care about his keystone much because he does the same thing and I was actually wondering a couple of I was wondering a little while ago I was like, hey wouldn't it just be better to like not Run, go first strike go spell book just yeah. go spell book Albatrava seems to agree at this point. 25 minutes later, we end up noticing it, and he, he uses it for a ghost, which achieves his nothing. <laughs> what it does, it gets his flash back up, is what it really does, and he thought maybe there was a Wubba Jonix at over it, much like Merwin yeah, is Merwin likely overstunned yeah. it here. He's gonna be in a 4v1. Solar flared into a very dead Karma, who uh, clearly had some bad Karma at this point. They're gonna teleport to try and turn this around, though, and that let's go. Got to extricate themselves right now, and maybe they just want to be around to make sure there's no Baron play available at the back end of this. Mm, and I think that's fairly okay again. Bison's not willing to give over over all control of this side of the map, but you know, like they blew the solar flare, didn't actually blow that much else. It was a fairly efficient pick from them. They have cooldowns remaining, and that is going to embolden them. Start up this Baron. 20 seconds till Merwin is back up. Does have the teleport and Cospect. He's looking for the flank. Look at Galvo as well, who's nearly at Meganar. Will get chunked out. They're going to pull off the Baron. Looking for more Cospect. Has the angle. Who will he land on with the Zenith Blade, though? Looking to get in. Manages to get onto the screw. But it's a decent bullet time turnaround. Galvo chucked out of the backside. Goes Mighty Dragon. Shot down. Down. Random. Gooby trying to try, but it's Meganar into the wall. Still falls down as a double right now for Gooby. He's still alive. They can't fight. Get on top of it. Finally shut down, but they can't gets it enough it's still a triple yeah. to gooby they get both 80 carries yes. but everyone else is dead and dusted and even with the momentary 5v4 atlanta can't find the right angle blowing that solar flare we said oh they only blew the solar flare yeah but that was a really big thing the multi-man cc couldn't come in early enough gooby ends up surviving the first part of that fight getting a bullet time which forces gambo out from his own a aoe cc Again, look how many people are CC'd at a time. Okay, you've got like the, the Zenith Blade. That's kind of it in terms of AOE CC for most of this fight. Look, gabo has been forced out. No one's really been held to account so far at this point at Letter. As much as they had an angle, couldn't quite coordinate well enough, and Bison's play the play the defense pretty well. They do, even in the 4v5, they've still got enough damage that with their last gasps, Random and Gooby managed to bring down the entire team. Of Atleto, it felt like in that one, and it was a feel good moment for a moment there for Atleto. They, they were really close to getting a lot of what they needed to. Can't make it work, but at least with the HP bars low enough, they couldn't secure the Baron afterwards. But I have to wonder whether maybe that was looking a little more and more like a last gasp, a last attempt at the team fight because the gold lead continues to extend. It's an infinity edge, fourth out yeah. random. The this moment is, so I this speak is about it. Yeah, this is this is the bonus of going for that shield blow, even though you go for the the Muramana on, on the Corky. You have the four items. You can actually build an infinity edge. You have yourself a non-crit item. It's a problem with the old Sundra build things getting yep. a little dangerous. Well, well dragons in a bit of root. damage. Dragon's going to take some damage, but he's healthy enough at this point. There's another word for scaling the scales on the back of his high tanking up a lot on the other side. Look, Cosmic certainly not as tanky. Falls down into the Cataclysm. His left. Oh. Sonic the bullet time shreds a few more, and the back end of it, they claim everybody else. It's Gavo alone, who's trying to run away, gets a Meganar onto the jungler, Albatrea. Still staying alive, misses the flag, and drag for Randon will hop forward, landing another big one. Misses that one, misses another, but it's now Fancy Feet alone, and a Gatling gun, which Gavo has got to try and trade out with. Maybe can uh, run uh, far enough away to get some more down Merwin, trying to zone this guy out. I think he's sure to fall here, I say, as he uh, does finally down the tower in the top side of this. And all the while, down. mid lane inhibitors falling, Vice is pushing in for the end, putting down that standard, the extra attack speed. We are cycling through the passive. Can they hold on? They've got away, but eight seconds on Sonics. I just don't think it's enough. And Vice ends with a stable game with an upfront team fight. Can't come out victors here. Their first win of the Amazon European Masters. I think on the checklist of things that Bison's wanted to do today, probably was just calm things down a little yeah. bit. It was to make sure that they could steady that ship as many teams will need to do after their first couple of the, uh, games, especially if they have some of those uh, really crushing losses coming in before the Bison's the team, which was so excited, uh, so exciting as a team, and excited, I suppose, in their own seats as well. But um, we're sat here and uh, you're looking at Bison's coming through for their first win. Alas, that is it from myself and my Americas. We have to throw to a break where afterwards Viper and Gorbo will be taking you through some incredible matchups. One in particular is coming up it's Gamer Legion versus X7, two potential favorites for the tournament. So you better still be in those seats in a few minutes' time.